G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Um, we've pretty much been looking at one instruction after another for quite a while now and believe it or not we've just about been through the entire basic uh, instruction set. So I thought before we move on to SIMD and the expansions to the instruction sets that have happened over the last couple of years um, I thought we should just spend some time going through how to put all of the little instructions that we've been looking at together into making some useful algorithms. So we've done a couple of useful algorithms already with our adjust brightness and zero byte array, but I just thought we'd do some more. So for a couple of tutorials, um, we'll just look at putting it all together. So for this tute, I've decided on uh, a really basic algorithm. What we're going to do is something like this. Uh, int find max. And it's going to take int star i, we'll call it and also int count. Okay, so we're just going to write a little function in assembly to find the maximum integer in an integer array. Okay, as simple as that. It's probably a good idea if you feel pretty confident with what you're doing um, to just have a pause of the video and figure out how you would do it yourself and then later on when you see what I've come up with uh, yeah, you can compare and see how they see how they're different, or see how they're the same. Do whatever you want. Alrighty, so how's this going to work? This is pretty much what I want to do. We're going to get um, an array given to us in uh, RCX, as per usual. Looks something like this. I might have six, seven, um, three, and nine in it, something like that. And what we're going to do is we're immediately going to assume that this top value is the biggest. So we'll put him over here in our biggest so far, which will be um, EAX. Then we'll move on to the second value and we'll say, is that one bigger than our biggest so far? And if it is, then we'll replace our biggest so far with that. It happens to be in this instance it's a 7 and our biggest so far was 6 so that becomes the new biggest so far then we'll move down to the next integer which is a 3 and we'll once again ask is that bigger than our biggest so far and we'll see obviously that it's not and finally we'll move down to the 9 here and we'll say once again is that bigger and we'll say yes so we'll copy that over our biggest so far and finally return 9 as the biggest or the maximum in the integer array. Alrighty, so that's what we plan to do. Let's go into a bit more detail before we get coding. You just copy this over here. Um, Alrighty, so one of the first things that we're going to need to do is check if they've given us a, a silly count. If they've given us zero or less, then we need to uh, tell them that they're an idiot. And we might do that by moving the minimum integer and returning that. So something like, um, oops, still got the box. Um, comp edx and zero, since uh, this count just here will be passed in edx, and jl. Actually, no, we won't do that. Mov ax. Now to make the minimum integer possible, um, what you do is you go eight, and then zero and then for each extra byte so there's four bytes in uh, an integer that's uh, a double word you put zero zero so just like that in hexadecimal that's the smallest integer possible so if we wanted the smallest byte it would be just eight zero and the smallest word would be eight zero 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 like that fair enough so in this instance we're after the smallest integer so that's it just there That'll be our error value. Okay, so the comp just here, the compare edx to zero, uh, isn't going to be affected by the mov. Mov doesn't affect the flags, so we're still right to j l e finished with an i in there. And down here, right at the very bottom, we're going to have our label finished just before ret. So if they've given us a stupid value, um, zero or less going to jump straight down to finished and it's going to return this negative value just here to indicate that they're stupid. Um, alrighty, so I think what's probably a better idea is to 
change this to one. We'll go through y in just a second. And this to L. Okay, so only if it's less than one are we going to take that jump. And the next thing that we want to do is mov E A X and D word P T R R C X. Okay, so what this line just here does is it moves this first six just here into E A X. So we can put over here E A X equals six. Um, the next thing that we want to do is uh, decide if there's only one value that's been given to us. If the count just here is one, then we want to actually return that six. We don't have an array to look through. We've only got a single value. So, like we just said before, the mobs don't affect the flags, and neither does jump. So the flags will still be set from what this compare here gave us, which means that we can say J E finished right here. And if there's only one uh, item in the array. Um, it'll jump straight down to finish after reading that item and return it. We don't have to do any more compares. Okay, so that's just a bit of um, housekeeping. One more thing that we can do now that we've read that first item, we can increment RCX. So let's do that. Add RCX4. Alrighty, so now we're up to our loop. How's our loop going to work? If I just... Um, yeah, I don't think we've got room. We'll have a go. Main loop. I'll just call it main loop. And all we really want to do is um, compare the next value to the highest so far. So what we might do is something like comp uh, d word p t r r c x and e a x the square bracket there. Okay, so we've compared the next value, this will be the 7 just here, with um, the 6 that we've got just here, and c mov g e a x um, d word p t r r c x okay we want to conditionally move this 7 into e a x if and only if it's greater than the value that e a x currently has nice and easy um, the next thing that we've got to do is uh, go up to the next um, byte Oh, sorry, the next um, D word, so that's just um, add RCX and 4, that'll take us to the next uh, D word, and then I've run out of room, so I'll just put a little arrow over here, uh, the bottom of the loop. So we've already got our count in um, EDX, so all we've got to do is subtract from that, so if we just dec EDX, that's decrement EDX and jump not zero to main loop. Okay, so that should just about do it. I've just noticed that I've made a bit of a mistake though. And the mistake is that we read the first, the six just here. And I never decremented the count. So right in here somewhere, we're going to have to say dec EDX. And that, my friends, should just about do it. Alrighty, so I've got Visual Studio open over here. And I thought I might run through how to set all this up again, just in case some folks missed it. But um, we'll code that algorithm. Okay, so File, New, and Project. Doesn't really matter what you call it. You can keep these directories if you like. I like to delete them and we right click on the solution just here and add new item select the C++ file and type main hit enter then right click on your solution again click build customizations and make sure that the Masm box is checked click OK uh, go up here to solution platforms click configuration manager and platform new Everything should be set up here. X64, Win32 is where we copy the settings from and uh, create new solution platform. So just click OK and close. OK, so we'll make our C front end first. Include IO stream. I'll just make a 10 long array. those values in it, we can put in whatever we want, or you could get um, dynamically allocated memory with a new operator, all good. And C out the next, uh, sorry, the 
max is i and 10. Find max. Okay, so find max is going to be the name of the function that we're just about to write in assembly. And it's probably a good idea to stick a breakpoint right there on the return, just so that the window doesn't close. And if we come up here, we'll write our prototype. extern c int find max int star i int count. Okay, so that should just about be it for the C++ side of things. We uh, right-click over here on our solution and add new item. Select C++ file, but remember to call it um, something with a .asm extension. So I'm just going to call mine asm.asm. Hit enter, and here we are in assembly. .code find max proc ret find max end p end. Okay, so that's just the uh, skeleton of the function. Let's have a look over here at what we said we were going to do. Okay, so int find max int i. Uh, maybe we should just make a note at the top in a comment exactly what it is that we're trying to program. Int find max int star i. I'll just say equals rcx and int count equals edx. Okay, now we know what we're doing. Let's go back. Okay, comp edx and 1 of eax, a very small number, and jl to finished. Let's have a go. So comp edx and 1 uh, mov eax 80 oops, o o o o o o o h uh, jl finished. Oops. Okay. So we've got our finished label and uh, we've made sure they don't give us any stupid values like 0 or negative 400 for our count. Silly sausages. Uh, okay, the next thing, mov eax d word pointer rcx. Okay, so we read the first value. Oops, ptr rcx. And then what? je finished deke edx add rcx4. Okay, um, je finished deke edx add rcx4. Maybe I should comment these things. Check that they given us a positive number. Check that they've given us a positive number. Okay, if they gave a negative number, we're done. Okay, so this is read the first value. Okay, so that 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 line there is sort of assume that the um, first value is the small is the uh, is the max. If that happens to be the only value, we're done. Otherwise, decrement the counter, which we know is um, something other than zero because of all of this stuff before and move on to the next int in the array okay where are we um, main loop okay compare d word pointer rcx to eax and that is pretty much um, c if the next Int is larger than our biggest so far. Um, C mod G E A X D word pointer R C X. C mod G E A X D word pointer R C X. Okay, so I chose here to read memory twice in a row. Um, it reads memory just here, reads a D word pointer in RCX, and then the very next line it reads it again. But um, it's not going to be slow, it's going to be about the same speed as reading the memory once, because from this first line, um, that spot in memory will be cached in the CPU, so this second line here will read it really fast. Is that cool? Anyway, add RCX4, deke EDX, and jump not zero to main loop. Main loop. Hold on. OK, 
Okay. Uh, I think that's about it. Let me just zoom out a bit, have a bit of a look. I might make a note up here. Returns int dot min on error. Save it and have a look over here. I think it's all good. Let's just hit F5 and see what happens. So the answer we should get is uh, 8. Let's see. Max is 8. Nice one. Alright, let's see if we can try um, something else. 55 we'll put. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Alright, so we did use um, signed comparisons. So something like negative 3 just here. Uh, if we'd used unsigned comparisons, so instead of um, C mov G, if we'd used C mov A for above, uh, the negative 3 would come out being the biggest. But we used unsigned comparisons, so let's make sure that it doesn't come out with negative 3. Good stuff. Alrighty, so that's about it really. Um, in order to make um, one that finds the minimum, I think it's pretty easy. Uh, you just change a few of these instructions and you'd have one that finds the minimum instead. And uh, just before we go, I want to point out some of the logic behind the uh, registers that I'm using here. So EDX I chose to be our counter simply because it started with the count, so we didn't have to move anything anywhere. Uh, EAX I chose to be our maximum, so that by the time we get down to RET, we've already got the maximum in EAX ready to return. And the other register that we use, our CX, uh, is obviously used as the pointer through the array simply because that was the pointer that was given to us. So, yeah, that's why I used the uh, registers that I used. And I think most of this should make a fair bit of sense. Maybe I'll just put a comment here. Um, conditionally move the new greatest. Conditionally move... Um, conditionally move to EAX. Anyway, uh, that's about it. So thank you for listening. See ya.